Hi, everyone. Welcome to Analyze Your Trade, episode number seven for October 10th, 2017. Uh, my name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of Timing Research. And tonight we will be discussing your trade ideas. Uh, we had uh, about 60 people submit up to five symbols over the last few days. And we're going to be talking about uh, some of those tonight. Uh, you should see the, uh, the list on on your screen while I'm talking right now. Um, I developed a show with Dean Jenkins of Follow Me Trades, but he's off this week, and I have Dave Landry here to moderate, so I'm going to go ahead and turn over the show to him. Okay, thank you, Dave Cosminer. Thanks to Dean, also Follow Me Trades, and thanks to Timing Research for having me back once again. John uh, Thomas of Mad Hedge Fund Trader, let's go to you first. For those of us who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about Mad Hedge Fund Trader. Dot com. Uh, Mad Hedge Fund Trader is a uh, global macro long short uh, research and trade alert service. Uh, we cover all asset classes long and short, issue about 250 trade alerts a year, averaging one a day. Uh, so far this year, our trade alert service is up 52%. We are average, uh, our eight year average is 34.5%. Uh, um, and um, people are pretty happy with that. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go over to Lance next. Lance Ipito of AlphaShark.com. Lance, for those of us who don't know you, tell us about yourself and tell us what you do over there at AlphaShark.com. Uh, everyone, I'm Lance Ipito. Um Actually, I know a couple. Every time I come on here, a couple people. Are, I started off as a actually as a working for Citigroup Global Markets, then um, became a CTA with a fund. So I did that for a few years. And then um, kind of two years ago, went to straight equity options, more unusual option activity, follow the insiders and piggyback on their trades. Uh, at Alpha Shark, our whole kind of uh, focus on is option trading. Uh, with unusual option trading, we have an option scanner that pinpoints the largest trades in the day. And it also gives uh, hindsight in sector rotation, um, you know, hedges, where's the money flowing in. So it's not just, hey, straight insider trading. So I do that for about two hours a day. And we do have an open house next week at alphashark.com, where if anyone wants to join, they can email me, lance at alphashark.com. And we have a trading room from the open to the close every day. Cool. Cool. All right. Up next, we have Stephen Place of investingwithoptions.com. All right, Stephen, to you. All right. Thank you, Dave. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephen Place. I'm the founder and head trader at Investing With Options, where we teach people just like you how to become great option traders. Uh, we specialize in aligning the risk in uh, an individual stock or market and making the best kind of option trade that fits that risk. So we do directional options. We do non-directional income trading like iron condors, calendars, and butterflies. Uh, we do long-term put sales and covered calls and pretty much everything in between. You know, there's always an option for uh, what you want to do and we'll help you get there. Okay, cool. I'm Dave Landry of DaveLander.com. For those of you who don't know me, DaveLander.com is an educationally based website as far as my philosophy the only way to make money is to actually capture a trend so i'm a trend follower i think you can only predict the short term when it comes to markets but the real money is in longer term trading so i trade for both short term and longer term gains through a, a hybrid approach i have a daily trading service that i put out i also have a weekly chart show when cosmin approached me to do uh, this show uh, as a guest and as a host he said, yeah, it's uh, this great idea we got. We're going to talk about some stocks. And it's like, well, we've been doing that for about 15 years. So I think it's a great idea. We do that every week at the weekly chart show, which I call Dave Landry's The Week in Charts. All right, let's uh, go ahead and open it up and jump right into it. Um, John, we'll go to you first. But if anybody wants to jump in uh, during or, or after, if you want to pass, that's fine, too. Uh, that's We'll just kind of – it'll be a little bit of a free-for-all, but I will touch base with each one of you on each symbol. So the first symbol is SQ. And if you're not ready on that one, I can go to Lance. Uh, go ahead. Give it to Lance. Okay. Lance, go ahead. SQ's first symbol up tonight. 
Uh, so Square, which, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Dorsey, the CEO. Uh, so Square, um, something I, I've been researching on Square for a while has been the option activity. It just seems with the classic uptrend uh, of Square that, I mean, it just, every dip is getting bought. If I look at other uh, names in that sector, Visa and MasterCard, they're both here hitting new 52-week highs. I'm not sure if I could get the screen sharing. If I could pull up a chart, will that work? Absolutely. And um, and what we could do is, if you uh, have any difficulties with that, we'll um, we'll pass and and we'll go to all right. We'll let come me back see if, if, if I could pull it up right here. And da, 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 screen share. Let's see if it pulls it up. All right. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So we have the classic uptrend on the chart. Uh, this is an indicator I created for Thinkorswim, actually for TradeStation and IntraTrader. I call it a dynamic trend indicator. So basically how it, if price is above this wave here, it's bullish, below is bearish. Um, price is above the wave, the trend is continuing to be bullish. And in the options market, which is, you know, I always say who's smarter, the insiders or me, they're always smarter. Uh, Square actually has, uh, seen quite the aggressive call buying going out to December and November. Um, not a huge trade, but like today, for example, a trader bought about 500 contracts of the November 35 calls for 60 cents. You know, that's calling for a pretty good size move in the stock at 3130 um, to you know trade above 35, specifically 3560 by November expiration. So that does capture earnings event. Um, I mean, really, I can't say anything negative about uh, the chart so far. Okay, cool. All right, uh, Lance, let's go to you next. The symbol of square. Uh, Lance just talked. Yeah. Oh, I'm That's sorry. I uh, I mean, I'm, again. <laughs> yeah, I'm with the, uh, well, I got mixed up in my order on here. Okay. Uh, Steve, let's go to John you next. Thomas if you want. Uh, <laughs> okay. Steve's got um, his charts up, so John, get your charts ready. All right, so... If you get, I've got a, a custom indicator, the IW turning point indicator that shows you the rate of change relative to the, the volatility um, over the past three months. And over the past 10 trading days, the stock is up 13%. It is outside of its uh, second standard deviation. So it's in an uptrend. If you wanted to establish a position right now, you know, that's a little bit more difficult of a call. Um, you probably want to wait for a little bit more of a blood uh, by the blood kind of thing on the very short term. What, I, what I'm looking for, and Squares is one of them, um, I am looking for some of these momentum names. If they get any sort of bad news right before earnings and sell off right before earnings, that should be a good buy the dip opportunity into that earnings event. Um, we, we saw it, you know, I'll, I'll talk about Shopify here in a little bit, but we just saw that recently with Shopify where, you know, it got hit by a short seller, uh, expose uh, and it's seeing a big stop run into earnings. So, you know, it's it's one of those I would prefer a pullback. You know, who wouldn't in this market right now? Um, you know, something around uh, just above thirty dollars a share I think would be a good opportunity instead of trying to chase at this price. Okay, cool, John. Let's go to you, SQ. Yeah, a lot of stocks have tripled in the last year. Um, I'll pass. Uh, all of our internal indicators are showing that the market is the most overbought in 17 years and that this is the most overbought sector. Okay. So uh, I have been avoiding fangs uh, since July and uh, instead buying what I call laggard or legacy technology on dips. And uh, Square definitely is not one of those. Um, and I can tell you, which ones meet that qualification when uh, my turn for that comes up. Okay, cool. Uh, as far as Square is concerned, I'm a pullback player, so it's definitely in a trend. What I like about it now is that it's a very persistent trend. So this would be a stock on my momentum list. But as John's pointed out, a lot of stocks are very overextended longer term. But as a trend follower, I don't get too excited about that, but I do prefer catching something a little earlier in the trend, and maybe towards the end of the show, if we have time, I'll show you a couple of those type of stocks that we're looking at now. But for me to trade this, it would have to pull back, and I would just 
possibly look at some other stocks out there that might have uh, not gone as far as this one. But it's definitely trending as a trend follower. I would definitely um, have it on my radar. Yeah, okay, show the me the one. pullback. Uh, there's nothing since August, and that's true for the entire tech sector. So, Well, you know, there's some stocks that are pulling back here and there. Uh, there's a couple of uh, what I call TKOs that happened today, like uh, you get sharp sell-offs. Uh, some of these thinner issues, uh, I'll give you an example. Cork, for instance. Nice little knockout move. That's the type of uh, move that we would look to get in above this high and a stop below the low. That's actually kind of textbook in nature. But, yeah, I hear you on that. It's not a whole lot of why I'm liking these uh, oil service stocks that are coming off of major lows right now as opposed to some of these stocks that are in longer-term uptrend. Also, there is some other technology, believe it or not, biotech, uh, especially in these relatively new issues within the last couple of years that have come public just died out and bottomed out forever, and they're, they've been flying up their lows lately, and uh, they're beginning to set up on pullback. So that's where I would be finding uh, some opportunities. Okay, next up we have an ETF. It's XLF, which is the financial sector. John, you want to take that one, XLF? Yeah, double in three years. Um, I think that uh, financials will be one of two or th two or so leading sectors for the next three years or – until the next recession, whatever comes first. Uh, and you can buy any part of that, uh, Goldman Sachs, Citibank, JP Morgan, uh, Bank of America, all should do well. You know, the, the, the major theme in the market going forward is to take profits and leaders, rotate into laggards. And that's actually the best thing that could have happened to us right now because the concentration in FANG in the first half of the year was very dangerous. That's over now. You had stocks do 50% moves in six months on the back of a 25% annual earnings growth. So they really were outperforming their own earnings by four to one. Uh, okay. you, know, you go to some of these bombed out sectors like uh, biotech, energy, banks, gold is another one. Uh, your risk reward is much better in these you know, laggard names than, than the superstars that have led until now. Gotcha. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Steven, since your chart's already up, let's go to you next. Uh, sure. Any opinion on XLF? And then, um, uh, Lance, you're next. Since the beginning of the year, financials have not participated with any kind of rally whatsoever. We've been in a range between about 23 and 25 and a half. So I can't do math when I talk. I think that's about two and a half points. So the measured move is going to be the height of the pattern, which is two and a half points off of 25 and a half, which is going to be 28. So that's kind of that's that's the stretch target that uh, I've got based off of this range. Um, we've got earnings season coming up, right? So that's you know we we will have a collision between the perception of risk and the actual earnings with these individual companies. So we're going to see a lot more there. Um, I think that one of the uh, better plays right now within that sector is going to be something like Goldman Sachs, if it does pull in uh, to 240 to maybe 236, selling some put spreads there because you have a nice, um, what I call a technical cushion, where we've got these very clear ranges uh, that often act to support at multiple levels. So you can sell those spreads and you can get away with a lot of um, uh, pretty steady income based off of that. Yeah, okay. we have the exact same trade on, by the way, in the form of the uh, 220, 225 call spread that expires Friday next week. Uh, you know, we've already made the most of the money on that and we actually rolled up to the uh, 227 and a half, 232 and a half. And that that through two thirty two and a half is the perfect pullback level on any correction. So I think we're good. You know, nine days into expiration on that, yeah. and we'll just keep doing the same thing every month. Yeah. Cool. All right, Lance. Any uh, uh, thoughts on XLF? Yeah, I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, everyone's long financials. I have. I'm avoiding them right now. Bank earnings, trading revenue is going to be horrible. Uh, banks normally don't. Well, they haven't been very um, volatile on earnings, so avoid, especially if you're trading options. And, you know, if, if I had to play them, I'd look for December again. I'm just not a big fan of uh, financials. Okay. I'll keep it fairly short and sweet, too. I tend to trade more inefficient stocks. And if you look on my website in the free reports, you can get an article on that. I think that's where the opportunity is. Uh, the financials 
Of course, they've done fairly well so far this year, but if you look at historical volatility, it's right in line with the overall market, so they're not going to double and triple from here, at least not over a fairly short period of time, and that's the ultimate goal. But like uh, whatever we're just looking at, Square, I believe, SQ, it is at a persistent uptrend, so on pullbacks, it would be uh, interesting to me. But again, I would try to find something that's more inefficient within the financials if I were to play them. But obviously, it's still in an uptrend, and I wouldn't fight the trend in the financials just yet. Uh, I know uh, you guys think they might be getting a little frothy, but as a trend follower, or some people call me a trend follower moron, I'm just going to continue to follow along <laughs> until I get stopped out. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I'll throw in one more thing on financials. Uh, what's different this quarter than last quarter? We did get a vol spike uh, in uh, August. You know, uh, even though it was a little one, that's always positive. Number two, stock volumes have increased this quarter. Number three, bonds reversed uh, and are generating a clear trend on the downside. Those are all positive for bank trading earnings, and we'll find out uh, in a couple of days. Okay, John while, John, while we have you, INTC, Intel? Yeah, I, I love Intel. That fits perfectly into my lagging uh, technology theme. Uh, you know, it only really started moving uh, right exactly when the fangs were peeking out. And, you know, while no one was morphed into an artificial intelligence play. And the reason is that uh, artificial intelligence is growing so fast it's now spreading out into the entire chip industry. And, of course, legacy Intel is the grandfather of all that. So we're, we're long Intel. We love it. We want to buy more on any dips. Unfortunately, we're not getting any dips. You know, went almost went up almost every day for a month. So, Well, uh, the semiconductors are making like 20-year highs right now. So I'm just – when you say lagging, you're looking for laggards within the semiconductors or – No, laggards are the fangs. Oh, okay. I got you. Okay. So, so it's uh, <laughs> it's it's going to make a joke, but it's in, it's inappropriate. It's all relative, right? <laughs> uh, let's go to uh, let's go to Lance uh, Intel IOTC. Uh, I've I missed the boat on Intel on this big run up. There has been call buyers. I mean all last month in it and they really made a killing i didn't participate i you know i like the semis until feel like you know the party may go on but i'm too late to the party to even show up um still very bullish um just another one uh i'm i'm avoiding i i tend to i ventured off more to these uh you know i don't want to say smaller stocks but we odd stocks or as i call them some junk stocks where no one wants to trade um you know intel it, it trades a lot of volume during the day it made a big move already i i'm just sitting on the sidelines okay steven any thoughts on intel sure um intel over the past month has rallied up 10 percent and that's not even the, the best runner in the semiconductor space. You look at Micron, you look at Texas Instruments, these very, very large cap, very old semiconductor stocks that have traded like absolute garbage for the past two years, finally catching a bid. In the short term, I think that the any good earnings is currently getting priced in. So one trade setup you could look at is going out and selling um, the oct, and I just pulled this up, the 27 oct 17, so the fourth week in October. Um, this is the 30, 38, 41 and a half straddle for about 42 bucks. Now, if you do 10 of them, your margin is going to be about six grand. Uh, these two yellow lines, your break evens after expiration, I think that's uh, a pretty good area to start looking at. So, you know, if you do trade earnings, if you want to gamble a little bit um, and get that edge, I think it's going to be a pretty good edge right here, especially in the semis. Okay. By the way, uh, if you are looking for more legacy tech, Cisco is another one of those. CSCO, you know, it's up only 20% this year. So I guess if your choice is to buy up 50 or up 20, you buy the up 20. Although it's gone up in a straight line for the past month also. Gotcha. Sounds like a delta relative strength type of play. Th that's all that's left to us. There's no value left in this market anywhere. Well, Intel, as far as stocks I like to trade, you can see it's, it's got quite a bit of volume to it. So this is a lot thicker than I would normally trade. Also, if you look at the HV, it's down pretty low, about 14, almost in line with the market, maybe a little bit higher. 
Uh, it has broken out, obviously, so maybe on pullbacks, and it is has decent momentum. But let me just show you real quick. This is a type of semiconductor that we trade, and I, I wish they all ended up this way, and they don't, believe me. <laughs> but this is one that triggered way back in January, and this is the little short-term versus longer-term trading that we attempt to do. And the secret sauce in this is a longer-term trailing stop. But it, it's up nearly 300%, and the point is that a stock like this is more inefficient than an Intel, because something like Intel, I should say, because this type of move is it priced in. And that's that's one thing that, um, that's one of the problems with the show, at least from my perspective, from what I like to trade, is that a lot of the stocks are very popular stocks, the Apples, the Intels, and things like that. But I'm, I'm happy to talk about any stock, so that's uh, that's fine with me. And it looks like you option guys are having a field day with some of these, so that's kind of cool. All right, uh, John, uh, you want to talk about Rig? That's an all-service stock. Well, you know, again, you're looking for laggards, and there's no better laggard than uh, the whole oil industry. Uh, you know, we put in a, another bottom in oil. Um, you know, the trouble with this industry, you know, it's you're trying to make 10, 20, 30 percent uh, profit before it goes to zero. And eventually that's where something like a rig does because it is the highest cost uh, uh, oil producer out there, or they service the oil, highest cost producers, and that is deep offshore. So, you know, if you're producing, you know, oil at an average cost of $30 a barrel in a fracking well, you know, why go offshore? You know, there still are 10, 20, 30 year contracts to produce offshore, especially in third world countries. Uh, so they, they do have a business, but um, uh, you, you might get a few months out of this, but I'm not sure how much more. Yeah, to those of us, uh, to those of you who don't know John, he often confuses the issue with facts, but uh, that was a very good uh, reasoning on that. Um, I, I hear that the, the deep offshore is a tough business too, so. I uh, can't argue with you on that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the one-liner on this. This is totally dependent on all the Arabs getting along with each other and sticking to their quotas <laughs> and getting along with the Russians at the same time. That's your one-liner on the whole oil industry. Okay, sounds good. All right, uh, Lance, anything on uh, rig? Yeah, so, uh, uh, you know, I, I like the energy sector going into the uh, – end of 2017 i feel like fund managers have to play catch up if they're behind and they're going to bottom fish on some of these energy names same with biotech um the 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 one thing that caught my attention today was seeing crude oil up and the oil names really not participate that volatility wasn't there the movement wasn't really there when you look at names like chevron uh conical phillips Halibur, rig just not a lot of not a lot of juice in them um and even the option there was really no institutional call buying any energy names so that got my attention when the oil name started to bounce what was the end of uh, end of august there was so much option activity from call buying to put selling and all these names uh, mro another one and everything really died down so uh Going into the end of the year, I would not be shocked to see rig up maybe 12, 13 for a, a price objective. But in the back of my head, and I think something important to um, remember, like what I said right before with John, is you know when when do they start getting hit, you know, big time, and they start trading like a rig back in the sevens, back in the you know yeah. the fives and down. I mean, I, I always think of speed drill when when. People bring to my attention Cedril, high dividend. Oh, it's great to own. And, and you know, if you look at Cedril now, well, uh, took a, took a lot of people out. So be careful. Short term price action, um, possibly twelve to thirteen. Yeah, and Rig almost killed Marky Mark too. What's his name? Marky Mark. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Rig almost killed Mark Wahlberg. So I'm not. A, yeah, we like Mark <laughs> Wahlberg, don't we? <laughs> Stephen, let's there's go to two, you next. There's two conservative uh, ways to play this sector. One is to buy uh, the Alarian MLP basket. That way, at least getting a, a high enough yield to compensate you for any reversals. Uh, the second way is to go out and buy Exxon Mobil for the five percent dividend. It looks like it's put in a bottom for the year. So you might do something like, you know, at the money call spreads 
or in the money call spreads on uh, Exxon Mobil, uh, and you got that uh, five percent dividend, creating a real floor for the stock. Gotcha, Stephen. Any uh, any thoughts on uh, Rig? Yeah, it's hot garbage. Um, <laughs> Twenty-two percent of the shortest float. I mean, if you're going to play this long, it is a short squeeze play, and that's about it. It it put in a, a new margin low sub seven and three quarters. That was almost we could call it capitulation. We could call it a bottom, but you know, it's probably not going to be an easy trader. And I know this from experience. It is not pleasant to try and play those short squeezes because they reverse just as hard. Gotcha. Um, I'm not a big fan of stocks that are this thick uh, again, but it, it, to me, it looks like it has bottomed out nicely. And if you look, it has made a bow tie, which is where you have three moving averages come together and spread out. And without going into details on that, if you go to my website, slash videos, davelander.com slash videos. There's plenty of videos that cover both sides. So I would say a major bottom is in place here, but let me just throw a stock in real quick. I would much prefer something like J-O-N-E, which has also made a major bow tie. It's a little speculative, and speculative, obviously, and low price, but it looks like a major bottom. And I'm keeping an eye on a lot of these energies that are down here at low level, scraping bottoms, and just beginning to turn the corner. Now, here's the thing. They've been hit fairly hard as of late, as Stephen has pointed out. So if they continue to drop it here, then I'm not going to get triggered in on a new position. I'll just throw one other one up real quick. We're long CRC, which is a very similar pattern, as you can see. And I think a major bottom is in place there, too. We get stopped out, no big deal. If we're right, if we're right big, then it goes back to $50 a share, and that's going to be worth a decent little trade there. So that's the kind of thing that we're looking to capture. Let's go back to you, John. AMD, that's another semiconductor stock. Yeah, only doubled in, in the past year. Sounds like a bargain to me. Um, you know, it, it's the same old story, you know, how much do you want to pay for growth? And what's what's happening, you know, taking the macro view here, uh, in a 2% growing economy, you pay gigantic premiums for stocks that are growing 25% a year. And that is, you know, AMD, that's NVIDIA, uh, that's all the fangs, that's what's happening. And, you know, I tell people, if you want to really be lazy, just go buy the ROM, which is the 2X long technology ETF, and forget everything else. Go on a long cruise or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, so, take a cruise. That's the advice. Let's go to you. Uh, let's go to you next, Lance, on that one. All right, let me pull up the chart here. So uh, AMD, we can see that AMD is at that this trend line resistance here, right just shy of 14, and we failed. One, two, we had a break of earnings, which apparently they had a great earnings quarter, but the stock completely reversed and then went negative. Um, so we have one, two, four times we failed at this trend line. And uh, the semiconductor space is very bullish when you look at names like TXN, TSEM, uh, NVIDIA, Micron, I mean, you name it, semis are uh, on fire. But AMD, my problem is it, it trades a lot of volume. A, uh, everyone thinks it's all there's all this growth in it, and everyone is long on Twitter and the financial media. So therefore, I take the opposite side of it. And I'm looking currently for a, uh, you know, a, not a semiconductor whole sector movement lower, but if I had to pick, uh, you know, one of the weak names out of the group, it would be something like AMD, just because if it starts moving lower, all the longs are going to get stopped out, and therefore you could see a flush of uh, price to the downside, which if you're short or buying puts, that's exactly what you like to see. Gotcha, Steven. All right, um, AMD, unlike some of the other semiconductors, has not moved yet. And so it would be a reasonable bet to assume that volatility expansion is going to come soon. We've got clear support at 12, clear resistance at 16. So I want you to look at this trade setup. This is the 27 ox 17. This is going to be the 13 and a half call and put. So this is a straddle. You buy it for $1.67. As long as AMD moves more than $1.67, you make money. Now, over the past four quarters, AMD has, has moved... 15% on earnings. This straddle is pricing in 12%. So that looks like a good vol buy here headed into its earnings report on the 24th. 
of October. Okay, cool. Well, AMD as a trend follower, let me draw my little arrow here, which sometimes people who fight the trend tell me tell me stick them on my butt. But as you can see, it's going pretty much sideways for months and months and months. And that stock I just showed you, KEM, is up about 300% over the same period. Also, take a look at semiconductors themselves. Nice persistent up run here. John may be right. They may be a little frothy, but so far, so good as far as trend following is concerned. So I would be I wouldn't be interested in this at all. I think maybe Steven's got the right idea, some sort of option play or something. But uh, that's uh, too many moving parts for me, and I, I leave that to the smart guys like uh, Steven and Lance. And I think uh, John, you play some options too, right? Oh, we we do mostly options. Uh, okay. You know, I don't want to sound rude here, guys. You know, this stock. Has it moved, but only if you ignore the 900% move up it made last year. Uh, you know, this year it's mostly flatline. Looking at a five-year chart, I'd say this thing's ready to break out to the upside. All gotcha. you need, you know, one more rotation into laggards, and this thing could catch fire again. Gotcha. By by the way, I advised an option fund back in my CTA days for about 14 years, and that's why I know not to trade options. <laughs> so uh, anyway. <laughs> Let's go to this darling of – well, let's, uh, let's finish up on AMD. We all uh, chip in on that one? Yeah, uh, uh, John threw me because he started over. Uh, that's okay, John. Uh, let's go back to you, John, and talk about Apple, AAPL. Yeah, you know, it, Apple fits into my theory of, you know, up 40%, the first half flat line for the second half. It basically squeezed out all of its performance in the first half of the year. Now the money's rotating into a dozen other sectors. Uh, so the question is, how long do this last? And my guess is that you might get another burst up to maybe $200, possibly in the first half of next year, once they get all of their uh, uh, their new products out, like the iPhone 10 or the iPhone X. So I'd be looking to buy dips. We're long the Apple uh, 140, 145 call spread expires next week. Uh, and any any news on supply chain glitches, uh, failure with operating system news like that, you want to be buying on those dips for a bigger move uh, next year. Gotcha, Lance. Basically, I'm bullish uh, on markets and I'm looking for long plays. Gotcha. Uh, Apple. I won't pull it up on the chart here. It's something. Apple, Facebook, Google, Softy. I'm avoiding right now with the fangs. Um, just names that I, I think there's too much there's better opportunity out there in the market rather than trying to you know be a hero and call Apple or Facebook's next big move they're in consolidation wait for the earnings event okay cool all right Steven you're next Apple sure um, we just closed out bull put spreads on Apple for nice profits I don't I don't care right now <laughs> it's in the middle of a range the the price action is basically efficient and random and we're not going to get any kind of signal unless we get a catalyst which is probably going to be earnings so you know into any move if we see enough volatility expansion I'll look to fade via selling put spreads uh, if we really really go parabolic sell call spreads but that'll probably never happen um, overall nothing right now is a no play yeah, I like what Steven said about efficient and random, and that's one reason I'm not a big fan of trading Apple. If you do look, though, it did bow tie down off of all-time highs. This is a bearish signal. Now, the reason I'm not shorting it is, uh, I don't know if I'm sure you guys read Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, old turkey neck would say, well, we are in a bull market, so there's no reason to short anything unless you think you have the mother of all short setups, which we did recently, and we got burn on. But... Uh, for now, I'm just going to sit on my hands unless I really, really feel like going after something. But I agree with Steve, and it uh, can be a little efficient and can be a little choppy. And, you know, something like this, and I think uh, John made some points too, you know, a little glitch in their operating system or a delay or a supply chain or whatever. Not that I confuse the issue with facts, but those type of things tend to make a stock like this jump around in big chunks as, a, as opposed to these big inefficient moves where there's a lot of excitement for some sort of future down the road, whether or not it ever materializes, who knows. But uh, something like Apple, I think, um, I forget how many funds own it. I think it's like 5,000 funds own it. 
And I think like, all uh, of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of that. Yeah, that's an under exaggeration there. And also, I think uh, I forget the number. It's either five hundred or five thousand. It might be. There's like five thousand analysts on Apple. Something ridiculous like that. So it's just it's just a crowded playing field and not a stock that I'm very excited about going after. Uh, well, next, I'm throwing one more thing here. Yeah, right. Apple's kind of a nice iron condor candidate right now. We've done this two months in a row where when you run down to 140, you buy the call spread. When you run up to 160, you buy the put spread. You just keep working that range back and forth. It's like having you know a rich uncle mail you a check every month. You know, eventually this blows out to the you know one way or the other, probably to the upside. But if you can you know put on four iron condors in four months, that's a big money maker. John, while we have you, TBT. Yeah, you know, TBT, prolonged bull market. Uh, we're two years into a 30-year bear market on treasury bonds. Uh, TBT is the inverse uh, from that. It benefits from falling uh, treasury bond prices or rising interest rates. And uh, we're uh, very bullish on that. Uh, loaded the boat when the 10-year treasury got to 202 uh, in August. and. Um, uh, we expect the 10-year uh, Treasury yield to hit 264 by the beginning of next year. Uh, that basically gives you another 10 or 15 percent left on TBT. Uh, the only negative on TBT is that the cost of carry is rising as interest rates go up. Uh, with yields here at 232, your cost of carry on this thing is over 5 percent a year. So it's a short-term trading vehicle. Uh, not a long-term hold because that, uh, you know, uh, short uh, interest cost uh, adds up over time. Yeah, you, you, you. I actually was going to chime in on that, but I'll, uh, I'll wait for my turn. Good, uh, good point on that. Uh, let's go to you next, Lance. Any thoughts on TBT? So. Uh... Where are we at? There. there we go. So with TBT, it's the uh, it's the leverage instrument. I don't trade any leverage uh, from the gold miners to the ETFs. Uh, you know the nugget, the dust, TBT. I just uh, like, like John was saying, the cost of carrying. I just feel like there's better ways to play it. Um, since going back to the financials, you know, I, I think financials they have earnings coming up. I don't think they have a huge parabolic move. I think they're gonna. Uh, trade sideways, if not a little bit lower, heading in into December. Therefore, 30-year bond prices or 30-year 30, 30 bond futures um, at support here start to bounce. So therefore, TBT should move lower a little bit. Um, so short term, I'm neutral to bearish on TBT uh, just because of my views on the financials. Usually, it, when everyone's short bonds and long financials, uh, when it seems too good to be true, it usually is. So I just take a step back and you know wait for a bank earnings to happen, and then possibly in December look to uh, uh, you know play the bonds if you if you really are wanting to, so to speak. Okay, Stephen. Um, as an options trader, I always ask myself: Is the juice worth the squeeze? <laughs> and uh, you know, if, if you're if you're slinging ten-year note futures, or you've got some serious leverage on with uh, some inverse funds, you know, you do you. Um, I'm uh, there has to be some serious volatility for me to to compel me to even trade um, long-year bonds. Um, we've got you know, I'm looking at TLT right now. So if you know, you know, if if you want to look at TBT, just stand on your head, and that'll show it to you. Um, we got support at 123. If that breaks down, next support's 117. Uh, other than that, um, it's just going to be a little bit more noisy for me. By the way, if you keep that chart up, there's a potential head and shoulders uh, developing there, uh, which could make this thing uh, interesting on the short side. Uh, and our long-term target for TBT is 100, which gets it back to where it was only in 2014. So. Uh, you know, if you're looking for a triple over the next three years, uh, this could be good. Okay. Um, as far as TBT is concerned, it has sort of made a bow tie. It has bottomed out, so I would say that it has bottomed. The problem with any inverse funds, especially if they're leveraged, let me pull up a monthly chart 
and they all look like this. Eventually, they all will go to zero, and it has to do with the fact that when they start going up, they're forced to I forget exactly how it goes. I'll get confused if I think about it too much. But on the short funds, if you have time, pull up the funds. And one day, if I have enough time, I might start a hedge fund. And I'm just going to short inverse funds. Uh, if you want to plan for the short term, that's great, especially the leveraged ones. But I would not play the leveraged ones due to the abysmal tracking. And then the short ones are just uh, abysmal tracking. And they it's all. It's average daily rebalancing. Yeah, it's, it's a daily rebalancing. Plus, with the shorts, they have to go in. And uh, if they go up, if, short, if the market goes down, it means they have to, they're forced to uh, short at lower levels. And then that eventually causes a problem, that constant shorting. And I think you hit the nail on the head. It's a rebalancing on the short side that really mops them up. Uh, and some people think, well, let me just buy them at low levels on a flyer. But they'll reverse split you to death. And if you don't know what reverse split to death is, uh, once it happens to you once or twice, you'll uh, learn a very good good lesson on that. So uh, I would avoid this uh, like the plague. Uh, if you want to mess around, do the TLT, but I would prefer to just find, uh, again, not to beat the dead horse, less efficient markets to trade for my style of trading. By the way, All right, John, for the uh, poster child for the contango that you were talking about, it's the VXS, yes. which has gone yes. from 15,000 down to eight before the latest five to one re-denomination. And the other really yeah. horrible one is the UNG. Uh, yeah, because that's got that's got the decay problem or contango, as you pointed out. And it, and they'll I don't know if they reverse split this one, but you can see, yeah, it was up at what sixty two thousand, and and it just it just heads lower. So it, you know a lot of people get in trouble with these type of things because they don't understand what they're trading, and the people actually go on TV and talk about these things, and they forget that the futures have a natural decay. And I don't want to dig myself a hole in that. Or, or bring the show too technical, but yeah, there's there's all kind of problems. But good uh, good point on that, uh, John. While we have you, let's talk about AAL, which is an airline. Obviously, um, hey guys, we got a few yeah. um, we got a few uh, requests from the live audience. Let's all right, let's do that. Do one of those at least. Uh, how about CL? CL, okay. All right, John. CL. Uh, CL. Just let me call the chart up real quick. Uh, uh, yeah, I know nothing about. This is not one of my regular traders. Uh, not a high growth. Uh, it's crude oil. He's, so, he's still, the the guy in the chat's talking about crude oil futures. He's oh, not talking okay. about right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm that's getting call gig from all of which I use every morning to brush my teeth, and that's about all I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, crude oil. I, I have a, the, the ETF up. I don't know what you guys if you want to take a look at the. Uh, uh, yeah, we cover so. quite a lot. Uh, 45 to 55 is your range for the next three years. And then we hit a recession and it goes back to 25. What else do you need to know? All right. Well, <laughs> we'll write that down. And right now at 50, you do exactly nothing. Okay. Uh, let's go over to you, Lance. Crude oil. Well, my, my crystal ball, because, uh, you know, if I'm following oil so much what's going on uh, um, crude it's it's actually pretty remarkable that we're holding or attempting to hold 50 I have longer term I have a very bearish view on crude oil but short term and not to get into politics and everything like that but I think as long as uh, uh, President Trump's in office we have oil hold um, I to throw a number out there at least 45 just I don't. I think if we have low oil prices, it, other countries get a little t uh, mad at the U.S. and there's too much chaos. So, um, short term, you know, the the bounce in crude today was nice to see. I'm just a little suspect why the energy names didn't move with the uh, crude oil futures like we've seen before, where you know crude's been up one to two percent some days, and you have energy stocks up you know two to three to four percent. Um, Look for some continuation in crude oil. I have a, a chart up here, and actually I'll pull it up right now, uh, just very quickly. Look to see if we could take out this high at 52.86. If we can on volume, then we scream, scream 
up higher to about 54, 55 before more consolidation um, right here in crude oil. Okay. All right, Stephen, any thoughts on crude oil? Uh, yeah, I mean, when, when you go out and you say it's obvious that, uh, you know, we're going to be between 45 and 55, you tempt the market gods to descend <laughs> upon you and no. say, oh, <laughs> so, yeah, it makes sense. It's range bound. I, I don't trade it. Um, on, with respect to the correlation between energy stocks and oil, we've actually been at a negative correlation for a little while. Uh, if you look at XLE and then this line right here, if you can see it, uh, we had actually been close to minus one for a while where it, it didn't really matter what crude oil was doing. We were actually running the opposite direction for a while. So we're finally getting back to that correlation. Um, yeah, the, you know, oil, sure, range bound makes sense um, with maybe a little hedge <laughs> on this. By the way, I know this isn't Fox News, but um, all Trump administration policies are price negative for oil. Deregulation increases supply drives the price down, and you look at the price action this year, that's exactly what we're getting. You're going to get a global synchronized recovery uh, economically and a flat line in oil. Is, is, it would have been unimaginable five or ten years ago. Yeah, that's. Uh, I hear you. Um, as far as oil is concerned, I think it's bottomed out in here. Uh, I wouldn't rush out and buy oil itself because it is a little choppy, at least at this juncture. I, I do trade markets other than stocks, such as Forex, but those markets obviously are more inefficient, and you have to pick your spots very carefully, and I don't see anything for any reason for me to go long the actual commodity at this juncture. But I am encouraged that a lot of these all-service stocks are sold out, but as I said earlier in the presentation, so far they've pulled back and kept pulling back. We did get triggered into one, and if they keep pulling back, hopefully that's the only one we get triggered into. But uh, I think right now, ones such as J-O-N-E are worth uh, continuing to play. Okay, uh, any other write-in requests? Any other live requests? Okay. Uh, if not, we'll go to A-A-L. And John, let's go back to you. A-A-L, it's an airline, right? American Yeah, I, you know, I used to own an airline once, and I have never understood the airlines. Uh, <laughs> you know, they... Uh, they seem to be perfectly correlated with the price of oil when they should be inversely correlated. Uh, so uh, my predictive power uh, for airline stocks is essentially zero, so I'll let the other guys take the time. Okay, cool. All right, uh, let's go to you, Lance, next. AAL? I am uh, AAL, uh, probably one of the top in the group, the other Delta, I like Alaskan Airlines too. When I went to Alaska back in uh, June, they were, you know, they have a, they're really the only people who uh, venture off over there. But uh, the Colbine and the airliners, really over the past month or so, has just outrageous. I'm talking huge, huge players coming in, buying JetBlue, American Airlines, Delta, UAL. I mean, I've seen super far out of the money calls that I shake my head and say, hey, these people are crazy. And, you know, looking at the airliners today, UAL, um, uh, UAL, AAL, you know, they weren't so crazy after all. So w when the big players are buying calls and, uh, you know, having a bullish bias, you know, I tend to think they're right, uh, no matter what my view is. And, you know, the charts are starting to back up a nice bounce here. Uh, and the airliners, JetBlue, UAL, Delta, and American, too. Okay. By the way, the last Steve? time I recommended Air American Airlines, it went bankrupt. <laughs> In 2013. <laughs> okay. John, once again, is, is a prelude to what I'm going to say, but uh, go ahead. Let's go to Steve at first. Um, uh, just, I, I would just focus on the pure technicals right here. It's it's running hard into 55. Um Ideally, the ideal setup here would be a run into 55 and into any pullback, um, anticipate that breakout above 55. Um, long-term chart, uh, well, long-term like to 2014, still looks fine. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for that. Okay. Yeah, if you took the ticker symbol off that last chart, I would say begging for a breakout. Right, you know, I'm, I, because uh, airlines have always been maligned 
Like it's, it's so easy to make jokes about him and everything, but the price action is kind of going against the joke. And when the price action goes against the consistent narrative that we've experienced, you know, that, that sticks out on its own. With airlines, I often joke, I'm going to build a system one day and you wait until they go up and then short them because uh, it just seems to be an invisible business. Occasionally, I'll trade a regional air, something like uh, what Stephen mentioned, like ALK might catch my eye here and there, GOL, which I think is a Brazil airline, regional or something. Something like that might have a little oomph to it, but usually they tend to be choppy, as you can see, kind of all over the place, and occasionally held hostage by the price and the choppiness of oil itself, if you want to give them a reason. But uh, just not a big fan of the airlines in general. But I'll trade anything that actually moves. Uh, let's go to – let's squeeze in one more tonight. I think we have time. BWLD. And let's go to you, John. Uh, what was the ticker again? BWLD, Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, and not one of my stocks. I don't go after these casual retail things. Yeah. Uh, you know, by the way, if I can make one farewell comment on the airlines, airlines are totally dependent on the cost of oil, the cost of money, and the future of the economy, and not a single airline management in the country has the slightest idea what any of these things are going to do. That is the problem with airline stocks. All right. Well, that, that pretty much, that's the fundamentals behind my wait for them to go up and then short them uh, system. Yeah, that right. makes sense. It is. <laughs> All right, let's go to you uh, next, Lance. Let's go to you next on that. Be wild. Oh, gee. Oh, 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 oh. So sad. Uh, I, I'm not looking at Be Wild or CMG. Let's see if I can pull up a chart to the long side. And usually I love junk. I mean, everyone hates it. I'm the first one to say, all right, perfect. It's going to squeeze out the, uh, the shorts. And, you know, Herbalife is a prime example of something like that. But I mean, this chart, it's just too bad, even for me. Uh, price below the wave from the daily to the monthly, sell, sell, sell. Um, you could make the probably the case, hey, 100 above long. Uh, same with CMG at, what, 300? But I think it's just one bad news event, <laughs> uh, you know, one negative story, and they flush, you know, yeah. 5 10%, like nothing. So... I'm not trying to be a hero here and be wild, especially if the overall market takes a hit. These things are going to get liquidated uh, even more. And just, I mean, I'm not a fan of, of be wild either. Uh, Wingstop is uh, something good, high, short interest, better looking chart uh, that I, I feel more inclined to trade than, than a be wild. Yeah, I'd rather buy Chipotle. <laughs> I've even started actually, eating their burritos, and I'm still living to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they're gonna. I heard they're gonna merge with In-N-Out burgers. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, uh, before we get too, too far, digress too far, Stephen, any thoughts on uh, BWLD? Uh, you know, it's in a downtrend. In, instead of trying to say, here's where I think it's going to go, I'm going to tell you the secrets to good buffalo wings when you make them at home. See what you want to do before you bake them. You want to air dry the wings for like eight hours. That makes the skin really crisp, okay? So that's that's the best tip I can give you for wow. instead of looking at it. Yeah, chart, that gives this gentleman a chance wing. to really get going. <laughs> yeah. I, I cook a mean wing too, so we might have a uh, you're not a too wing off. Be, so we might have a wing cook off one day. There is actually a massive shortage in chicken wings right now that's going I, on. I believe it. Yeah, we should pull up chicken wing futures. Chicken wing futures. All chicken right, chicken wing futures. Go. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, before I forget, John, let's go back to you. Let's go ahead and uh, any closing thoughts uh, you want to tell us, and anything else you want to tell us about Mad. HedgeFundTrader.com. Well, 50-year uh, veteran of the financial markets. Um, you know, nothing new ever happens. They just keep replaying the old movies over and over. All you have to do is identify the movie early and you can make money. Uh, you can find us at www.MadHedgeFundTrader.com. Get in on our trade alerts. Uh, so, uh, you know, basically we have a seller strike in the market. Nobody wants to sell their stocks and pay a 39.5% tax rate now, when if you wait three months, you might only pay a 20 or 25% tax rate. So absolutely no one is selling, and that's why you're getting moves you know, 10 days straight up 
uh, in markets. And that, that could continue. It'll either flatline or keep going up till the end of the year. Uh, next year, it could be interesting. Okay. All right, Lance, let's go to you. Any closing thoughts? Anything else you want to tell us about alphashark.com? So we're having an open house next week. It was supposed to be this week at Alpha Shark, but we're moving it to next week where it's free. You can hop in the trading room uh, via go to webinar, and from the market opens, the market close. I, I will be in there for uh, about two hours a day hosting, ranting about my love life, option activity, charts, and probably more of my love life at the moment. And uh, you can follow me. <laughs> yeah, you can follow me on uh, Twitter. Uh, I actually have a huge position on Match.com. Right. It's been one of my best stocks of the year, so uh, I've actually not been a size, really big following you, it. How you trade it. <laughs> exactly. And uh, there's my Twitter uh, Twitter profile, Lance Sapluto. I see that Steven uh, just added me. I didn't recognize him with uh, the short hair. So uh, <laughs> check it out. Feel free to email me, Lance at AlphaShark.com. And you know, right now when the markets aren't doing too much, I try to have fun. Uh, you know, with everything going on now, you know, not trading as much, but still following the markets, doing homework, tracking the insiders, trying to get that big move. I've been on a good run, getting some uh, big insider trades in, and you know, I can't complain. So, Check Lance, I thought you, I thought you were more of a farmers-only type of guy. Well, you know, I, I, I ventured off. Match owns Tinder, so I went off there. I'm 0 for 3, bad dates. You know, I, I, I hired a life coach who I'm paying an outrageous amount of hour. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all the movement aligned. There's always grinding. Mrs. Zipolito. <laughs> yeah, or that. Yeah. <laughs> the secret is uh, go to a dive bar on the San Francisco waterfront. That's where I found my last date. <laughs> the, uh, the, I'm actually going to write about this because uh, if it wasn't for uh, I don't watch much sitcoms, but I do remember watching a, the Seinfeld where George did just the opposite, and I couldn't get a girlfriend to save my life, so I did just the opposite, and within a week I met uh, the girl I ended up marrying. So it's like uh, that you know try the opposite sometime, and you might be surprised. And I was going to tie it back to trading. I think we all know the story about the broker who had the the client who did the opposite, and I actually had a broker who had one just like that. But the the ethical problem comes in: do you add money to the account once they blow it up, so you can keep trading? But that's a whole. <laughs> most most of the girls on Match.com are guys anyway. <laughs> oh, come on! There, there's only there's only fifty percent are bots. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> They're high frequency maybe, maybe traders. Yeah, maybe I'll try shorting a stock for once. I actually was short Disney. Uh, the other day, which worked out great. And I was short Target, and I was like, man, I can't hold this short overnight. Target today rallies, and I'm like, all right, no more shorting. It's done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lie down and take a nap first. So you missed your Target. <laughs> all right, Stephen, before we forget about you, uh, did we are we go to you yet? No. Uh, any uh, closing thoughts or anything sure. you want to tell us about investingwithoptions.com? Um, yeah, thank you all so much for coming out. This is a lot of fun for all of us to come out and talk stocks, and uh, we hope you get a lot out of it too. Um, in the next uh, few days, I'll be sending you an invitation to get free access to this turning point indicator. Uh, it's going to be available to download for Thinkorswim and TradingView. So just keep your eye out on your inbox, and I'll get that indicator sent to you for free. Okay. Dave Landry here, DaveLandry.com. If you go to, and I need to shorten this URL, but if you go to DaveLandry.com slash timing desk research dash special offers, and I'll get that link out too, so you just click on it. Uh, and you just put your information in here. You get a $100 gift certificate, so you can go to my website. Uh, get to know me first. You can get all three of my books. Just come to the Dave Landry's that we can charts weekly webinars and get to know me there. Or go to YouTube. I have about, I forget how many, maybe 1,500 videos there. So check out some of those videos or go to my website slash videos and check that out. And again, uh, I want to thank you guys for coming tonight. John, Steve, Lance, I'll let but, uh, I'll let Dave Cosman wrap things up. But uh, again, I, I agree with uh, Steve. A fun show, good show, good crowd tonight. So thank you guys for showing up. And I want to pre I appreciate everybody uh, watching uh, that's watching live while recording of this. So thank you so much. Back to you, David Cosman. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, just want to remind everyone watching: be sure to hit the YouTube subscribe button 
if you haven't yet to get updates on future shows. And uh, be sure to join us next week for uh, the uh, Crowd Forecast News uh, episode on Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then the next episode of this show uh, on Tuesday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, on the schedule for next week, I have uh, John Thomas going to be back, uh, as well as uh, Dan Passarelli, uh, Fausto Puglisi, Simon Klein, Matt Buckley, Anka Metcalf, AJ Brown, and Dean Jenkins. And uh, so just want to thank, again, my guest for this week, John Thomas of Mad Hedge, of MadHedgeFundTrader.com, Stephen Place of InvestingWithOptions.com, Lancey Polito of AlphaShark.com, and Dave Landry of DaveLandry.com. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.